All right, so um, this is the video in which I'm a little stuffy. Um, sinus something, whatever. Um, what, I, what I mean to say is this is the video on 8.6, solving rational equations. And that's exactly what your objective is. Just one objective, solving rational equations and inequalities. So the inequalities part is just a little bit of an extension. I think we can handle it, though. Okay, so the picture here that I chose to illustrate the objective, solving rational inequalities and equations, um, this is a, it's a picture of the world, but it's, it's drawn so that each one of the circles represents a country, and its size is proportional to the actual population. So even though maybe the United States and India, um, maybe the United States in terms of area might be bigger than India, I don't know, I have to check that. But you can see in terms of population, it's way, way bigger. This is one of those kind of proportional maps in terms of population. And I, I chose this because that's what solving rational equations mostly looks like. It's proportions. And can you solve a proportion? If you can, you can do this without too much trouble. So let's look at then um, just one simple warm-up question. It's a proportion. How do you solve proportions? Well, you just, here we go, it's a proportion, you just set the cross products equal to each other, right? You, of course you, you learned it as you cross, multiply, and divide, but don't think of it like that. It's a little bit too limiting. You want to set your cross products equal to each other. So here I have 12x is equal to, and then five times seven, 35. So x is equal to, yeah, I don't know what that is. 35 over 12, and it's done. You can like uh, put it in the calculator if you wanted to, but that's okay. The reason why this is true is very, very simple. If you were to give me any other fraction that is equal to 1 half, just give me one. 2 fourths? Okay. Well, let's try 2 fourths. And if you were to cross multiply these, for this cross product, I would get 4, and for the other cross product, I'd also get 4. For any two equal ratios, equal fractions, the cross products will always be equal to each other. That's what um, proportion means, is that the ratios are equal. Okay, so let's follow this up with an actual, well, this is a rational equation. I've got two rational expressions that are equal to each other. It looks like a proportion, so I'm going to solve it by cross multiplying. Whoops. Whoops, technical difficulties. I uh, need to pull out the pen there. There we go. So let's just cross multiply this. Here's one cross product. That is 11 times x minus 2 is equal to, and then here's the also cross product, 7 times 2x minus 10. And I put the parentheses there on purpose. Sure, they're supposed to technically be there, but can you guess what the most common mistake is on solving these. Go ahead, I'll give you a second to think about it. That's right, they will forget to multiply the 11 times both the x and the negative 2. Usually they'll multiply it times the x like this and get 11x, but then forget also that it's 11 times negative 2, so negative 22. Yeah, mm-hmm, that's the mistake. So over here we have 14x minus 70. Let's just get everything on one side, subtract our 11x's over here, so 3x, add the 22, someone's banging on the door, of course, I'm trying to make a video, so 22, 50, no, 48, come back later, I'm doing a video, again, just a second, just a second, I'm making a video, Come back later. Okay. So divide that by 3. X is equal to, it goes in there, 1 times minus 16. X equals 16. Voila. We just solved ourselves a rational equation. It was a piece of cake. Okay. So when solving rational equations, this is the first version. This is the first way to do it. Um, step number one 
set the cross products equal to each other. That's what you do with a proportion. You set the cross products equal to each other, okay? Solve your equation, and then number three, you want to check the answer. We didn't really do that before. The reason why you want to check the answer with a rational equation is sometimes you get an extraneous solution. Remember, extraneous means it looks like an answer, but whenever you plug it back into the original equation, it doesn't work. The main reason on this one is that we don't want to divide by zero. Don't divide by zero. So let's look back at that previous question there. Rant, 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 right here. I get x equals 16. If I were to plug 16 in here or on this side, would I get zero on the bottom? No, I wouldn't. So I think that we're going to be okay with that answer. Sometimes you'll get an answer that will make the denominator equal to zero, and then you have to throw that answer away. Okay? So that's a pretty simple process. Let's try this one here. Um, so it's not set up to look like a proportion, but we can make it look like a proportion if we do what to the left-hand side? Get a common denominator. That's right. Add up those two fractions because that's what it's telling you to do. So let's add them up. What's the common denominator going to be? Here I got a 2. Here I have an x. They're both different, so it's just 2x. So I'm going to multiply x and x on that first one. And on the second one, it's going to be a times 2 and a times 2. So this new equation is 7x over 2x plus 6 over 2x is equal to 3. Keep simplifying here, and I get... Um, Mm, 7x plus 6 over 2x is equal to 3. Now I can set this up as a proportion as if I think of 3 as 3 over 1. So let's cross multiply here. 6x is equal to 1 times the other one. 7x plus 6. Subtract that over. Negative x equals 6. So x equals negative 6. There's the answer. Now just check to make sure that it's not going to make any dividing by zero, any denominator equal to zero. So if I stick it in right here, I get 7 over 2 plus uh, 3 over negative 6. 3 over negative 6, this makes this negative 1 half. Um, that is 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. That definitely checks out. Look at that. We did our problem correctly, I did this again. Sometimes before you cross multiply, you have to add or subtract some sort of rational expressions by getting a least common denominator. Hey, that's exactly what we just did. So that's one thing we sometimes have to do. Add something up, maybe subtract something up before we can do our cross multiplying. But hey, here's a different way to do that. Another way to solve rational equations is just to multiply everything, both sides of the equation, by the least common denominator of all of the fractions, of every single fraction that's in the equation. What that's going to do is magically get rid of all your fractions. They're all going to totally disappear, and then you have no fractions in your equation anymore. And then, uh, of course, you want to check to make sure that you haven't created any extraneous solutions, anything that might make the denominator equal to zero. So let's try that same problem we just did before, except for multiplying both sides by it least common denominator. So if I remember correctly, the least common denominator here was 2x. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by 2x. So if I multiply the left-hand side by 2x, the two, let me change colors here. Re, re, how about red? The 2 would cancel out with this 2, and then I'd multiply the 7 times the x, and I'd have 7x. Switch colors again. Re, re. How about green? This time, I would multiply and uh, cancel out the x with this x. Remember the 2 that's cr cross crossed out in red is still actually there. Um, and I would have 3 times 2 is plus 6 is equal to, and now I do have to multiply both of these out, and I would have 6x. And I think that pretty much is the same as the previous uh, equation. Just 6 is equal to negative x when I subtract it over, and x equals negative 6. Exactly what I got before. It looks like it might have been a little bit less work.
All right? So another way to solve these is just to multiply by the least common denominator on both sides of the equation. Um, so uh, take a look at that one. Let's see, am I going to have you do this one yourself? Mm. No, let's do this one together. Yeah, and then uh, we can pause and let you try some on your own. Anyway, so let's try this by just multiplying by the least common denominator, which means I have to factor this bottom right here. 9x squared minus 25 looks like the difference of two squares. 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5. And wh would you look at that? That just happens to be the same two factors that I have over there. Again, sometimes these things are made to work like that, okay? They just, whoever's making these math problems up, they're doing that just to kind of make it easier for you. So if I multiply both sides of this by 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 5, all my fractions, poof, going to disappear. So when I cancel stuff out on the first one, the 3x minus 5 will cancel out with this 3x minus 5, leaving 3x plus 5. So 2x times 3x plus 5. Okay. Now, don't forget about the minus sign that's right there. So minus, and I'm going to have up top x plus 1. This time the 3x plus 5 will cancel out with this one, leaving me with 3x minus 5 equals, all of this will cancel out with all of that, poof, and just leave me with negative 4. Look at that, no fractions. Now, I might have a quadratic equation right here, but that's no big deal. So, distribute here, 6x squared plus 10x. I'm going to leave this minus sign for right now, I'll distribute it in just a minute so I don't forget about it. So here I get 3x squared minus 5x plus 3x and then minus 5. So the middle term here just simplifies to negative 2x. Keep working. So 6x squared plus 10x. I'm going to have to subtract everything, so it's just changing all the signs. Minus 3x squared plus 2x mm, plus 5 equals negative 4. Now combine all our like terms. So this together with this makes a 3x squared. A 10x and a 2x gives me plus 12x. And then I have a positive 5 over here. Add the 4 to it plus 9 equals 0. Look, everything is divisible by 3. So why don't I divide by 3? So I have x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. This is going to be easy. This is mirror, 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 equals 0. x and x, a 3 and a 1, a plus and a plus, which means that my answer is x equals a negative 3 and a negative 1. So there are my two answers, negative 3 and negative 1. Look back at the problem. Is there any kind of way that's going to make a division by 0 with either negative 3 or negative 1? No, it's not. So I think I'm going to be okay with those two answers. All right. So here's your opportunity to try two supremely awesome problems. So go ahead and pause it, give those two things a try, and then come back and see if you did them right. All right, let's see what you got. How about that? Is that the right answer? I hope so. So on uh, the one on the left, number one, you factor uh, the bottom of the right-hand side, x squared minus 1. It's a difference of two squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. And since um, the other fraction has an x minus 1, the common denominator must be x plus 1, x minus 1, times both sides by it. This one cancels out, leaving you with 7 times x plus 1. Negative 5, nothing cancels out. If I were to, you know, expand that out, of course, I'd get x squared minus 1 back, so that's why I just wrote it down. And both of these will cancel out, both of those, leaving you with just 6. I get quadratic after I simplify it, factor the quadratic, and there's my two answers. 
Would either one of those answers make the denominator equal to zero? Huh. The only thing that would make the denominator equal to zero is plus or minus one, and that's not going to happen. Okay, so similarly, over here on number two, maybe it looks a little bit more frightening because uh, algebra. Anyway, I want to factor this bottom down here, and very, very conveniently, again, the same two factors are the ones that I get that were already on the left side of the equation. So there's the least common denominator. Multiply both sides by it. On the first one, the x plus, or 2x plus 1 will cancel out, leaving you with the 3x plus 5 times the original x minus 3. And on the second one, the 3x plus 5 will cancel out, leaving you with the 2x plus 1 times the original 4x. Everything cancels out on the bottom of the last one. Distribute, simplify, quadratic equation, factor that thing, you get 1 half and 5 halves. Do either one of those make the denominator equal to zero? Almost. That one half almost would have, because two times a half is one, one plus one is two. If it was a negative half, then we would have had to throw it out. All right, so there is uh, the first video on um, rational equations solving it. Uh, check out the second video where we do some with some complex fractions. Should be interesting.